One of my favorite ways to run wide zone RPOs and even inside zone RPOs is off of split zone action. In this video, I'm going to take you through how I adapted the different variations of split zone from the Shanahan and McVay offense to better fit the high school level. Now we've got two different ways that we're going to do this. The first one is with our sift call, and that's primarily the one we're going to be talking about. Sift is just what we would call our split zone. We can run it with our F or our Y, so we do have F, Y, sift, depending on your formation, depending on the defense and what you're trying to do. What that means is that the fullback or the Y, whichever one you tag, is going to be responsible for the backside C gap by coming across the formation. So we could be running 18 F sift here, running to the right. We got wide zone going to the right, and then F sift, fullback coming and being responsible for the backside gap. Imagine there's no fullback there, and we could run Y sift as well. In the Shanahan tree, they call this a couple different things, again, based on the formation, the flank they're running to. Sift means they're going to run it strong. So this would be truly F sift here if they were going to run it this way. If they were going to run it weak, which they don't really do with wide zone. They don't really run F sift weak, but they do with inside zone and they call it Wendy, where the fullback is sifting towards the tight end, but we're running to the left. If they run Y sift, they will sometimes call it whiz. And you can see this in their playbooks, the, uh, the Redskins 2014 one and the Falcons 2016 one, they would call this play Y sift if they were running it to the right. And then in the 2018 49ers playbook, they call this exact same play whiz because they consider when the Y is sifting that the right side here would become the weak side. So they like their weak side run starting with W. We've got Wanda, Wendy, whiz. Any runs going towards the open side where the play side tackle would be responsible for the edge defender, they like to start with a W. But for us, I think the simplest way to do it is going to just be tagging whichever player we want to be the sifter and tell them that they are going to sift in the play call. Now you'll see gate on the left side as well, and gate is our wham tag. So sifting puts the sifter responsible for the backside C gap, and everybody else is running wide zone. What gate would do is Gate says that we are going to sift the first down lineman backside of the center. So let's just say we've got a three here and we ran 18 F gate. Then the left guard here would have his wide zone rules. The left tackle here would be blocking back. And then the fullback would be responsible for sifting the three. So as far as our responsibilities, it's very similar to our regular wide zone because now we're just blocking our wide zone rules with the front and then we've got our sifter coming backside to man the C gap instead of him just running free. We've got our offensive line responsible for the mic and the plus one, play side receiver responsible for the plus two, and then we've got our RPOs and our SOs, our zone read screen options that we can play off of this as well. All right, we've got our 4-3 drawn up. We are, from this point on, really only going to talk about sift. I will just say that Gate talks about the first defensive lineman backside of the center, so we would not wham a head-up nose. If we were facing the tight front and you call Gate, then that sift block should go to the 4-I, and the backside tackle would look for whatever C-gap defender, or if you're running it you know, maybe to the walk-down jack and there's just an open edge on the backside, he could try and climb up and get a linebacker, whatever you want to do based on the game plan there. But as a general rule, I do prefer those against four down just because it makes that angle a little better and you don't have to worry about the four eye. So looking at F sift here, we'll get into some Y sift stuff later like we have been these last few videos. We're going to ID the second linebacker in the box and we can run this both ways. So we'll go 19 F sift and then 18 F sift here. As far as where the fullback is positioned, he can be positioned in any of the three spots. He can be strong, weak, or in the eye. 
And it really depends, I think, on that backside edge defender. If he's quick, then you probably want to align him backside. So if we're running 19 here, we could put the fullback backside, but he'd be strong here, and he would be able to get a clean block that way. And one thing I like about this way is, again, normally we're running in the direction of the fullback, whichever way he's aligned. So the defense could think here that we are running to the right because that's where the fullback is, but we would actually be running left here and we would be getting that F sift backside. If he is in the eye, he will be going straight there as well. If the fullback is on the play side, he's going to have the quarterback boot out and then he's going to get between the quarterback and the offensive line going to make that sift block. You'll see the 49ers do this with use check a lot where he will fake like he's going to come up into the line and get to a linebacker inserting, and then he'll dart back and sift the backside defensive end. And it really messes those defensive ends up because they think they're going to get a clean shot at somebody, and then the next thing they know, they have a fullback in their helmet. So I really like the versatility of this play in that your sifter can be aligned anywhere in the backfield. So for simplicity's sake, we'll just keep him in the eye so I don't have to move him around until we get to our read concepts. But we've got 19 F sift here. Let's draw it up. We'll have a double call between our left tackle, left guard up to the plus one. Center's going to have the nose. We would have a B call backside to the mic. The Y would have the minus one here. And this is something that you would really need to hone in on game plan week. If you're going to see this front and maybe you don't want to run F sift this way just because of this, because normally the wise rule is to man the backside gap, but because that minus one is in the box and the backside tackle can't take care of him, the Y would need to get up to him if you're going to run it pure. So we've got our sift backside with the F as well. Depending on who your smarter player is, a variation you could make off of this, and the 49ers, they do this as well, is you could still have your tight end man that backside guy so things don't change for him and then change things for your fullback make a rule for your fullback that if the minus one's in the box then that's who he gets to so two different ways to skin that cat the receivers are following their normal rules that x would have the play side safety that's the plus two here z backside is getting the strong safety and the corners are exposed all right, 18F sift here. We would have a triple to the plus one. Guard has the three. Have an A call to the mic. Backside tackle has the minus one in the box. F sift would have the backside end. Running to the right, booting out by the quarterback. All right, under front here, working 19F sift. We have our mic. As we're running 19 here, we would have two solo blocks on the front side, A combo to the plus one, C combo to the mic, and then F sift on the back side end. Receivers here, same rules, scooping out those safeties. 18 F sift, we have our mic, we have a solo on the front side, we have a double on the end to the plus one, center's got the nose, B combo backside, sifting the backside C gap. One of my absolute favorite things about the sift play is the RPOs you can have off of it. And the difference here with sift and man is that the offensive line is all blocking zone. And especially the tight end if you have him in too. So the fullback is just taking care of the backside gap. Whereas with man, you've got at least one, probably two guys on the backside that are not blocking zone. So the rest of them would be, and then the fullback is inserting there. And it's all great looks to give a defense, but having the whole line flowing one way, I think can do maybe a little bit more damage if you have a fullback that can get there and clean up the backside. So you can certainly still run this from under center. Um, I think this is just a great way to highlight against this front specifically the things we can do in the RPO game. So here we're going to go 28 F sift Z glance. We have our ID'd mic. Our Y would have the jack. We'd have a double call on the four I up to the plus one. 
center and left guard here would have the nose. We'd have an A call, backside tackle, scooping out the end. Now, I know I said I don't always love the gate tag against four eyes on the tight front because of the nose. One of the things that really gets you with the tight front is if you can't scoop out this four eye, if you can't make that block. So what you could do here is instead of running F sift, you could run F gate, man the backside tackle on the star, and then come and wham the four eye, and then you've still got your locked box concept so we can throw our RPOs. So here we've got our Z glance, reading that strong safety, who if they're playing their true sling fits that you normally want to see in the tight front, he should be coming down to insert into that fit when he sees the number two receiver, our tight end, blocking. All right, let's say that we have flipped our fullback and halfback here. We're now in change right, and we want to run 29 X glance with an F sift. We have our mic. We would be solo on the front side. Our A call would get to the plus one. We would have a C call here to the mic. Our F would have the jack back side. And then we have our X glance running that way. All right, let's talk about some adjustments you want to make versus an eight man front. If we were just going to run regular F or Y sift here, we'll say F sift, that's the formation that we're in. It would look like this. We'd have the backside tackle getting to the minus one, and we'd be sifting the backside end. This is an okay play. One of my biggest personal pet peeves is leaving box defenders unblocked or unread, and this does kind of put you in that situation with that backside down safety star, whatever you want to call him. If we're running to the right here, you're going to be okay especially because he's outside the sift block there, so he's going to have to run all the way around. He's not going to make that play unless you've got a really slow running back and that's a five-star player. But that's just not a situation that I personally prefer to be in. So I would much rather run some kind of variation where he's really going to be controlled by the bootleg rather than running the split zone idea here. Now with that said, what I really like to do against eight man fronts with our split zone blocks is turn to zone read and convert the sift block to a load block. And you're going to go fake sift that defensive end loop around him and block that extra defender backside. We're going to read the defensive end. And then now we have all eight men accounted for in the box. So this is going to fit up just like I just drew it. I'll talk through it this time. We do have three linebackers, so we're going to identify the middle one. Our tight end would be solo on the jack. We'd have a double on the end to the plus one, an A call on the nose to the mic. Backside tackle has the minus one in the box. So we would fake block that defensive end, running to the right. Quarterback pulls it. He's probably going to get inside that load block. And there's two different ways that you can call this. Uh, if you have a smart fullback, he should know on a 39-38 sift play that he does not need to sift the C-gap. He needs to loop around that defender and get to the star. So instead of calling F or Y sift, you could call F or Y bear. Now, I don't recommend running 39 F sift here. Let's talk about why. We would need to fan the front side. Our A call would go to the plus one. We'd have a C call to the mic. And then the linebackers aren't really in a good position here. Our F sift, imagine that this is our F and this is our running back. We're running to the left here. We would want to read the jack, but the fullback would need to come inside of him to block that linebacker. So if the quarterback pulls it and we get a scrape exchange, the angles are not going to be very good for the fullback to actually make that block. But what I do like if we want to run to an open side here is running it to a two receiver surface and maybe getting some Y sift. So remember, we have only talked about F sift to this point. You can do it with Y sift if you want to do it out of maybe zebra personnel. And we're going to show one right here. This is a way that you can get to it against a 3-3 stack if you want to run to an open edge. 
Now we are going to run 39 here. And the Y is backside. That's just because right now, that's how we can get the front set the way we want it to. So we're going to get them to set the front. Different 3-3 three, three stack teams handle trips differently. So we can I can just confidently think this is how they would align to a, a regular double set here. So we've got double right. We're going to go Y over, Y sift, or Y bear, depending on what you need to call it. We'll ID our mic because we have our two receivers out here. That star is going to be a lot more detached from the box. It's just drawn on the whiteboard here. We will be able to just have our regular double call to the plus one, a call to the mic, backside tackle on the minus one, and then the Y is going to leave that in so we can read him. Now, we'll make mention of a couple different things in terms of zone read with sifting. I don't like having a screen option backside for a quarterback pull just because he's running this direction and then we have that lead blocker for him built in with that load block. So because he already has those lead blockers, I think it's best to just keep the receivers blocking for him and let's just get a, a convoy there for the quarterback. I really like it with the two receivers on the front side and then just a lone receiver backside just because it's less people that have to be blocked for the quarterback. What I definitely would not do with zone read is run any kind of gate where you're going to wham that backside defensive lineman because you're just going to end up whamming him right into the quarterback if he gets a pull read. So gate should strictly be reserved for 19-18 and 29-28 in my opinion. All right, last front here, looking at a 4-4. Four, four. Here we're going to go 39 Y sift or Y bear. We would ID our backside linebacker. We'll have two solos, a combo to the plus one. Backside tackle would have the mic. We're going to loop around for the jack and read the defensive end. Zebra would have the star. X have the free safety. Z taking that corner different formation here same front i do want to mention on the last couple that we've done y sift you could be in a formation like red left open just like we've done in some other videos where we're really just looking at the players on the chalkboard and you could have been doing f sift to a to a two receiver side the exact same way as we did with y sift i just wanted to actually get some y sift in there to show you but for our last one here, we're going to be back in our regular personnel just because of how I like it against this exact front. We're running 38 F sift or F bear here. It would fit up just like this. So we'd have a triple to the plus two. Guard has the three. A combo to the plus one. Backside tackle has the mic. Fullback would be looping around for the jack. Z receiver has the free safety, X has the corner, and it looks a little weird because we do have the tight end going for the plus two here, but if you think about it, if we were split out like we have been, and, and this was the Y, it would just be turning that triple combo into a solo block for the tackle. The Y would have the star here, so maybe this is the way you want to teach it if you're teaching the zone read version of it first and then you bring the Y in there tight and turn that into a combo just to translate that a little bit better. Remember backside, we'd be reading that five and our running back is going this way, quarterback following his lead blocker. So lots covered in this video. Remember you can run split zone with sift. You can run wham with gate. You can do either with the Y or the F. And remember with 39, 38, you need to have some way to communicate that sift block converting to a load block if your sifter can't remember that it's a 3938 call. In the comments, tell me your favorite way to block a front if you want to run an RPO. And if you want to find more of my adaptation of the Shanahan McVay offense for high school, you can find the link to my CoachTube course in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd subscribe to my channel, you'll find more content. And in this next video, I've got one of my favorite tags for a split zone run, so you don't want to miss that.